Your Majesty. You may call me Jamie Stewart for the few moments of life left to you. So why Swordbot? Well, for as long as I have been fencing some <coughs> years, whether they be stage fights at a Renaissance Festival, HEMA tournaments, or the SCA, a common question in the community has always been whether or not a sharp rapier blade is something more like a lightsaber tip or a baseball bat, and whether or not the, all those layers of clothing, the doublet, the jerkin, the linen shirt are... More like wearing essentially nothing, like tissue paper, or substantial armor that can protect you from even the most potentially vicious blow. Well, I went about building Sorbot to answer these questions. As simple as the question, answering it's not trivial. Swordbot was developed to deliver consistent thrusts at a target. Each thrust would follow the exact same motion and forces would be measured. It accelerates at over 2 G to 2,000 millimeters a second, a speed similar to a fast fencer in the SCA. The impact would be measured both by a video camera at 1,000 frames a second and by specialized load cell sensors that would record 7,500 measurements per second to determine how much force is actually being felt by the rapier blade during the movement. With the machine developed, it was time to turn our attention to the clothing simulations. We started with a light linen to simulate that of someone dueling in just their shirt. And spoiler alert, it's a bad idea. We then created a simulation of a silk doublet made of shantung silk, a canvas inner lining, light linen lining, and again, light linen for the shirt. Next was a linen doublet constructed of medium weight linen shell, a canvas linen inner lining, a light linen lining, and also topped off with a light linen shirt. For our final test, we wanted to experience history. For this, we developed a simulation for the outfit Neil Sturr was murdered in. For those that don't know, Neil Sturr was murdered by Eric XIV of Sweden in 1567, and his clothes are on display in Sweden to this day. His outfit was constructed of a garment, weight deerskin, with a heavy canvas lining and a medium weight linen shirt, as those choices match the extant garment best. Each simulation was tested with a total of eight thrusts per garment. Doing this, we had a wealth of data to process and analyze. The data we had at the end of each thrust consisted of motor data that told us where the sword was in the real world, command data that told us where the sword bot thought the sword was, because those are not always the same thing, and finally, the force measurement, which is the actual forces the sword is feeling during the movement. The first thing we had to do with each thrust was to use the motor and the command data to correlate all of the thrusts. Correlation allowed us to lay each thrust data set one over the other and each measurement in the time series. They're within 20 to 30 millionths of a second apart, so we can treat them as roughly the same moment in time. We then use signal to noise ratio boosting techniques like signal averaging and the Savgul filter. Yes, that's a very fancy name, but it happens to be the most referenced paper in all of chemistry to be able to find the measurement we are looking for. Finally, we focus in on the part of the data that relates to the sword actually stabbing the target. We find the peak and boom, we have a number. That number is how much the test patch and ballistics gel resisted the thrust. That's the, the force. And, and as we learned from Newton, if I'm imparting a force 
The force is being imparted back on me. Well, that resistance, bef that peak resistance before it drops off, that's the amount of protection or defense the material had before the sword finally penetrated it. In short, that number, if you were to feel it, equals you starting to have a very bad day. Let's review some results. First up is a ballistics gel in our control. It comes in at 29.6 newtons of force. That's about 6.7 pounds and right in line with published forensic papers for stab wounds with knives. The next up is a linen shirt. And funny enough, it actually does slightly worse at 27.8 newtons of force or 6.3 pounds of force. I think I know why, but you should have something to look forward to in reading the paper linked below. And here's the silk doublet. This was a shocker. It comes in at 45 newtons of force, which is a respectable 10.6 pounds. However, that is the lowest of all the doublets. The linen doublet did the best, peaking at 61.7 newtons of force. That's about uh, 13.9 pounds. So if you're gonna get into a sword fight, best not take that doublet off. Finally, we looked at poor Niles. The King of Sweden would have only needed to put 54.5 newtons of force into the thrust, or 12.3 pounds of force to stab poor Niles to death. What's interesting is we did a quick video from behind and you can see all the deformation of the material. It seems to stretch almost a half inch before finally bursting and the blade coming through. But what does all this mean? Well, let's take ourselves back to the very scientific lightsaber bat tissue armor charts. We saw in the video footage, there's some real deformation in the raw ballistics gel, and at six pounds, it's not merely a touch, nor is it nearly effortless force, like a lightsaber or a scalpel. So let's say it's about here on the chart. Next, let's look at our various pieces of clothing. But before we do that, let me introduce you to Ox. Ox is a 60 pound bit bull, he's very sweet, but if he steps on your foot, that's more force than the linen doublet will resist. So keep that in mind as we review these results. The linen shirt is actually worse than tissue paper. And if you need to blow your nose, it would rub your nose raw as opposed to tissue. So, I mean, double negative, I suppose? The silk doublet was pretty respectable, so let's place it here. Next is poor Niles, and finally the linen doublet. So nowhere are we anywhere near armor. And so, Here's where we are. At the end of the day, people have to get stabbed to be hurt. Swords require force, even minimally, and bodies deformed, a topic I didn't even get into here. However, it's not that hard. After, uh, after all, remember Ox. And thanks for watching. Yeah, that's amazing.